All right, we're gonna look at how we can edit a video once it's already into the system. Um, so you can refer back to how we uh, drop a video onto a foreground video onto a slide uh, to make sure you know how to do that first. So let's say we got this foreground video in there and something's wrong. It's upside down, that's a problem. Or let's say we wanna start the video at a different moment than what the video file itself does, or we wanna end the video file early, or we wanna increase the audio, or any number of things that we can do. Uh, we can edit within ProPresenter. First thing I'm gonna do is get rid of all this tray of all these other videos and images. To do that, we just go up to the top, click Video Image, and that will open it if it's not there, or it'll close it if it's already there. So we've got this video. What can we do with it? Um, let's start with, I'm gonna add a go to next timer to this. Um, with a foreground video, if you set this at zero seconds, what that tells it is once the video ends, it'll wait zero seconds and then advance the slide. And that lets it kind of fade off. So that way you're not stuck on the last frame of the video. Um, so if we were to try that, it starts playing the video, that's awesome. If we go to the end of the video, it should, five, four, it should advance to the next slide. And if it doesn't, we can talk about that. Oh, it did, look at that, magical. Um, so that worked. Now we wanna edit this video and make uh, the video not upside down. To do that, we right click on the slide that contains the video. We go to Media Properties. This opens up a handy dandy little uh, window. Let's start with the Info tab. Um, the info just tells you the file name and all this stuff, but not really much to mess with there. Properties is the big one. Scale to fit will make sure the video scales to fit into uh, the frame the best. Downside, you may have some extra space on the sides or bottom, depending on the, 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 the aspect ratio of the video. Scale to fill will stretch the video so that there's no blank space around the edge. The downside is that might cut off the top or the bottom depending on how it scales. Um, and stretch to fill will fill up the entire slide, but it will just literally stretch the video out to make that fit happen. Um, and that means you might get an extra wide looking video or an extra tall, narrow looking video. Okay, so we're just gonna leave it scale to fit because usually that works great. All right, her video is upside down. We can click flip horizontally and that'll do a mirror image left to right. So we'll leave that original the way it was. Flip vertically, this is the one we want. We click on it, boom, look at that, it fixed it. Um, and you can unclick it or re-click it. Another edit we can do, we can add volume to it. Um, it's currently set at 100%, you can set it to 200%. It adds a little audio bump, which is handy, especially if it's not a video that's been like professionally produced with like audio um, magic in there. Um, it just helps give homemade videos a little extra audio oomph so it's not so faint or quiet for the people at home. Um, it's not a huge difference, it's just a few little notches I can show you here. So if you look on the right, her talking voice is somewhere hovering around here when she's speaking. Okay, now if we increase that to a you can see how it, her speaking voice creeped up just a little bit up into closer to the yellow range and it's touching into the yellow. So you can use the volume. You can use the volume to, to get a little more oomph. All right, so that's over here, properties. Last property is the behavior. We want to stop the video when it reaches the end. That means that as, uh, as soon as the video has concluded, it'll just stop on the last frame. Um, the Lot, the option for loop might be useful if you want to keep a video rolling over and over and over again, um, but stop is usually the way you want to go. Effects, um, not really anything you'd use usually, but it might be useful sometimes, who knows? Um, that'll adjust the entire video's um, look, so to speak. Okay, now we go down to this middle part. Um, you can uh, re we can set the in and the out point on the video. So let's say there was a, a gap of time where they're waiting. You can wait until they speak, until they start, start speaking and then click the in button. And wherever the cursor is when you click in is where the video will start when you um, start it up. So right now, the video would start here in the middle, which is not where we want it. 
Same thing with the out. If there's some extra stuff on the end you want to cut out, just click the out, and that will move the out point to wherever the cursor was when you clicked out. And if you want to reset back to where it was, just reset in and out, and they're back at the original beginning and ending. Um, and then that should be good to go. Your video is now flipped over. It's got maximized audio, and it has a go to next timer to make sure that it just skips over to the next slide um, as soon as it concludes. I should also add the go to next timer uh, only behaves in this way with a foreground video. If you were to insert, I'm going to go in the editor here, if you were to insert a video using the, the, this import a media uh, video element to the slide, the go to next timer no longer works in that way. It works like as an absolute timer. So if you had a zero second go to next timer, you'd click the slide and it would wait zero seconds and go to the next slide. Um, if you import a video using this option with this video element item, um, you would need to set the go to next timer to be as long as the video itself. So if you have a 90 second video and you import using this option, you would need to set your go to next timer at 90 seconds because then it would wait 90 seconds and then advance the slide, um, which would be when the video concluded. And that's how you edit a video on slide.